Hey everybody, I'm so happy to have you guys back on the channel where we talk about everything feminine, including music, media, and news. Hey y'all, I'm just popping in real quick. I know it's raining in the background, probably just ignore that, but I just wanna say that there is some extra tea at the end of this video, so make sure you watch all the way through. What's up everybody, today I'm back with another video. Yes, I'm back for good, like for real, for real now. And today we're about to get into this Megan Thee Stallion versus Carl Crawford, Carl Crawford, okay, Carl Crawford, <laughs> and 1501 record label because yesterday Megan went live and said that the reason why she hasn't been releasing any new music is because her record label is preventing her from doing so. But before I get into all that, you know I have to take it all the way back to where this first started because to be real, Megan and 1501, or better yet, Carl, have been having issues for going on like a year now, pretty much since she blew up. So 1501 is owned by Carl Crawford. Now he isn't just some random who created a record label either. Carl Crawford is a retired baseball player who is worth at least $100 million and his name might ring a bell to some of y'all because if you watch Basketball Wives, you would know that he used to be with Evelyn Lozada and they have a son together. Well, at some point, Carl went into business with a man named T. Ferris, and 1501 Records came about, and their biggest artist to date is Megan Thee Stallion. Carl has alluded to discovering Megan, and she frequently shouts out both him and 1501 Records. She's a 1501 queen. It's been said before by Megan and others that Carl really saw something in Meg, and he put a lot of money into her career so that she could get to where she is now. So then, coming into 2019, Megan sees major success with her single, Big Old Freak, and then she releases Fever, which is a mixtape, not an album. Keep that in mind, because I'm gonna bring that back up. So Fever was also released with a music video to Reeler, which was actually a trailer to the Fever movie directed by Hype Williams. And when I say movie, I don't mean like box office theater movie. I mean like what Beyonce did with Lemonade. So, but at this point, Megan had to find new management because before her manager was her mom, Holly, who passed away in March of 2019. So Megan ended up signing with Jay-Z's Rock Nation management. Now the deal wasn't announced until September, but we don't know exactly when Megan and Rock Nation started negotiating that deal. But at some point, somewhere around this time that Megan signed with Rock Nation or that she started to get in contact with them, her visuals for Fever got scrapped. Megan took down the preview and it never saw the light of day. I remember specifically seeing one scene where it was like Megan was like a ninja type of samurai type of thing and Megan had these swords that she whipped out and then the scene cut to the baby so for all of y'all who were asking for the cash ish video it was a part of the project that got scrapped so I don't really think that's a coincidence that around the time Megan was probably trying to negotiate a new deal with Rock Nation that her fever visuals just got scrapped everything got scrapped so then after Megan announced her new partnership with Rock Nation Carl Crawford came out and said that Megan signed that deal without him knowing. I'll let you take a look at that clip here. And uh, she recently uh, announced uh, that she did a management deal with Rock Nation. Right. And uh, I heard that you were unaware of it until she actually made the announcement. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So that's that's the, the, the ups and downs. <laughs> huh? stuff, yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, um, yeah, I, did, I wasn't in tune about it. And I had, you know, <clears throat> the powers that be. Um, you know, come at me at a certain way. And, you know, I had to go get Jay Prince, but I po I made a post for Jay Prince. Me and Jay Prince made a post together mm -hmm. um, before her before her post. So everybody think that I did it after and was all upset. I, at the hmm. time, I wasn't even like aware of her signing. So I was getting with little Jay for the powers that be, you yeah. know? But then when the C that, you know, she was doing it, it was like a little, it was a little strange, so. Yeah. But, you know, it's, like I said, I, I chalk all my mishaps to the industry. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So going back to the fever thing being scrapped. So you might be like, okay, well, why did the fever movie get scrapped? But Hot Girl Summer still happened. And I don't have any real inside information. I don't have any facts or receipts. But I will tell y'all what I think. And I think that Carl probably has ownership over the stallion as well as Hot Girl Summer, the phrase, which is why it ended up getting trademarked and profited off of specifically specifically through the song and video with Nicki Minaj. And I'm gonna tell you why I think that later in this video, but this part here is just a thought, so moving on. 
So then in December of 2019, a fan told Carl that he should be happy that Megan was making him all this money, to which Carl replied that he has his own money and he is fighting for the money he is owed from Megan, which Megan said is not true. There weren't any details given and Megan is signed to both 1501 and 300 and 300 Entertainment doesn't have that great of a reputation either. So maybe that adds extra issues monetary wise, I don't know. So after Hot Girl Summer, Megan wasn't really releasing any music up until BITCH. And then, now as of yesterday, she makes it known that she is unable to release music due to the record label. So take a look at her live where she explains it all here. I got something to say. So. It has been a lot of three going on that I don't like and I just feel like I need to say something I am signed to an independent label okay independent that mean it ain't no major label that mean that the shit y'all be seeing me doing is happening because I am an independent that do independent shit. I wake up and I say, hey, I want to do this today. Hey, I want to drop this today. And usually, I can do that. So all that, all these them covers and them fucking charts and all that shit, that ain't because I had no help. That ain't from no push. That ain't from no money. All that radio, I be doing all the performances I'm supposed to do. I be doing everything that I do because I want to do it because I'm independent. The first label that I'm signed to, both my labels is independent labels. Y'all on there? Y'all with me? Independent. But I got all the freedom to do what I be wanting to do. Now, let's talk about where it started going wrong. No, Rock Nation is my management. I'm not signed to Rock Nation as a label. So, me and my mama built that from the ground up. I was doing ciphers. This earring just don't want to be on. I was doing ciphers. I was freestyling in front of the car, in front of my house. I was rapping in front of anybody who was going to listen to me rap. Rapping because I want to rap. That's what I like to do. I ain't wake up one day and be like, I'm a rapper. No, I've been rapping for a long time. Been want to be a rapper. This is my passion. I feel very strongly about it. My mama used to answer all my emails. My mama was my manager. My mama was my rock. My mama was everything. It was just me and my mama rolling around this hoe. Doing Megan the Stallion shit. So then, we met T. Ferris. And T. Ferris was like, okay. I, I have this label and I really want you to sign to it. It's an independent label. We just starting up. Me and my mama love T. Ferris. Boom. Signed to 1501. Now, 1501 had a bunch of artists. Boom. Signed to 1501. 1501, very new. 1501 got a label already. They, they been... They been had that. But when I got on the label, now, you know, now I'm a part of the label. They didn't have nobody that was really like, you know, on a large scale yet. So my mama was managing me. We was doing our own thing. We was doing our own thing. So I started getting more popping, more popping. And then I signed with 300. That's another independent label. Okay? It's my second independent label. So, when I signed with 300, everybody's still a big happy family. Everybody happy. Everybody good. So, I signed with 300 because even though 300 is an a, a independent label, it's still a bigger label. Like, in my head, it's like, okay, they're going to be able to put my music in more places. Like, because I was still... Upload 
like CD baby, even when I was on 1501. So, I mean, I'm still on 1501. But even when I first started on 1501, I was still putting out through like little bitty distributors. So, when I got with 300, it just happened to go to like a bigger scale. So, point blank period. Now, on this day, I want to tell y'all that 1501 trying to tell me I can't put out no music. 1501 don't want me to put out no music. And I've been seeing a lot of little on the internet. All I did was ask to renegotiate my contract. Then it became a big old thing. When I signed, I didn't really know what was in my contract. I was young. I think I was like 20. And I didn't know everything that was in that contract. So when I got with Rock Nation, I got management, real management. I got real lawyers. And they was like, do you know that this is in your contract? And I was like, oh, damn, that's crazy. No, I didn't know. So... I'm not mad at 1501. I wasn't upset because I'm thinking in my head, oh, well, everybody cool. We all family. It's cool. It's nice. Let me just ask to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Soon as I said, I want to renegotiate my contract, everything went left. Like, it just all went bad. It all went left. So now they're telling the bitch that the, she can't drop no music. It's really just like a greedy game. Like, it's really just real greedy. Wasn't trying to lead a label. Wasn't trying to not give nobody money that they feel like they entitled to. I just want to renegotiate some shit. I'm not a greedy person. I'm not a person that like confrontation. I'm not a person that's a bitch. Like, I work with everybody. And I'm nice. And I'm real family oriented. Be like, oh, yeah, they made Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion was Megan Thee Stallion before I even got over there. I've been rapping, been freestyling, been doing me, been been made. Don't even care about what's right. They care about money in the end, and it's just a, it's a greedy game, man. Y'all don't see no music from Megan Thee Stallion. It's because. 1501 don't want to drop that music. I really be working. And to try to stop me from working is really crazy. All I want to do is make music. All I want to do is put out music. I just want to drop my music, man. Free me. Tell them. Somebody tell them. Free Megan Thee Stallion. I'm finna go on a whole campaign. Just think that I'm not finna drop my music. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, when you're doing the business with people, you know, you understand that you might have to renegotiate your contract at some point in time. Uh, what you don't calculate is the person that's on side of you, um, you know, turning on you, you know what I'm saying? And when that happens, you know, all hell break loose. So for Megan, she just, she just, you know, kind of young, I think. And not, I don't know if she was thinking right or whatever, but when she went and got her lawyers, her lawyers came and threatened to sue me, you know what I'm saying? Take care, you know how they do, they try to come, threaten to sue you if you don't renegotiate and all that type of stuff. And, yeah. you know, <clears throat> Basically, you know, come take everything, basically, because, you know, they come in and normally a person can't defend themselves or fight back or something like that. And then you just end up giving it all. Well, I don't even want to deal with it. So, but in this case, I had to, like, stand firm because I know what I did in the beginning. I had to show receipts showing all the stuff that, you know, things that we've done in 1501 and mm -hmm. provide all that, you know, for the lawyers and all that type of stuff. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, right now we're in a position where we just kind of we try to renegotiate the contract deal to where both sides, you know, yeah, both sides are comfortable, and when we get back to we get back to work, you know. But that's pretty much it. They they wanted they she went to Rock Nation, hoping that Rock Nation would get out of the deal with me. That didn't work, and we was just back to business. All right, so that's pretty much what has all happened. 
from early 2019 all the way up until now. So now you got all the tea. So now this is where we get into the opinions, the theories, the discussions, all of that. And this is probably going to be a little all over the place because it's just so much to say, so many different perspectives, and I, I don't know, it's just a lot. So there are people on either side of the fence with this one. On one hand, you have people mainly making fans, bashing Carl Crawford, talking about how foul these labels are, hashtag free the stallion is trending, and so on and so forth. Then you have the other side saying, oh, well, Megan should have read her contract. Business is business. Carl is doing what he has to do. And I honestly see both sides and I have a lot to say and a lot of insight. But before I do that, I want to get into this theory here. So for those of you who are subscribed to me or watch me on a regular basis, you would know that I took a basically the whole month of February. I took that month off. And while I was off, I came across some information regarding Megan. I wasn't looking for it, but I just happened to see an article stating that Megan had a charge, like a criminal record, and that someone was trying to shop the story around along with her mugshot. Now, mugshots are free for you to look up online, but of course, if no one knows about it, I think no one is going to go looking for it. So I guess they were trying to sell the story to the blogs because they wanted to taint Megan's image. And lo and behold, not too long after, Megan's mugshot along with the story had been sold and it was out for everybody to see. I didn't follow through with what all had happened with that. I know she came back and explained what supposedly really happened, but I was on break, so I don't have much of an opinion. But I just wanted to say that some people find that weird as well, that her mugshot was leaked at this time while she's having issues with her label. And then three weeks later, Megan comes out saying that her label won't let her release any music. I don't know if those two issues are related, but some people just don't think that it's a coincidence and it kind of ties in with this whole story. So now I'm gonna get into my commentary and what I think, and I'm gonna let y'all know ahead of time. I'm about to get very real and honest here. Everybody on my channel knows I love Megan as an artist, but in this situation, my opinion is not 100% on her side. What I will say is that these contracts are not easy to read. I can't, and probably you can't either, just sit down and read through a contract like that and fully understand it. You have to hire a specialist, a lawyer who was trained in that type of language to ensure that you understand completely what's going on and they can be very much expensive. However, Megan admitted that she didn't even to read the contract at all so it's like how much sympathy can we have if you didn't even try to get someone to read it for you last year Megan was asked if she signed a 360 deal by a fan and she basically replied no she signed a good contract so if she didn't sign a 360 deal because even if she didn't read her contract she would have known at this point whether or not she had a 360 then it would seem as if it was just a disagreement between Megan and Carl and unfortunately it has gotten to the point where where now Megan can't really release music because although we don't know everything, if she didn't sign a bad deal and just wants to renegotiate certain terms while remaining on the label, it doesn't seem like Carl is trying to do her wrong or at least he wasn't trying to in the beginning. He just doesn't want to let up on the original contract, which he doesn't have to, especially after Megan allegedly went behind him and signed with Rock Nation. And you also have to think she done went and did that and she's asking to renegotiate her contract but she hasn't even released one album yet remember what I said Fever was a mixtape not an album and Tina Snow and Make It Hot were EPs not albums when you sign contracts with labels they're going to want an album out of you and it could be that once she got over to Rock Nation and got beside more powerful and knowledgeable people somebody probably told her that her contract is trash and so she probably tried to renegotiate to better benefit her especially now that she's gotten so big but in Carl's mind he's probably like Megan you cross me by not telling me about Rock Nation now that you're over there with them you want to switch the contract up but we're the ones who helped you come up I put all this money behind you and then y'all are asking well how did she release B-I-T-C-H well this is what I think it could be that they will let her release music but only under the original contract terms how they want it to be done but Megan doesn't want it done under those terms so that could be what she means by them blocking her music is that it's not done how she thinks it should be done especially like I said with her going from being who she 
she was in 2015, 16, and 17 to who she became to be from 2018 up until now. What I do know is that this is business and Megan Thee Stallion is a high value product and business is not always cute. Things could turn really, really ugly, really, really fast. And it's looking like it might have already headed in that direction. It's, so we don't really know what's going on with that. But y'all, I'm very much into business. So I could go on and on and on. But I'm going to end it here. I would like to take Megan's side because I like Megan. But just to be real, I see different perspectives here. All right, y'all. So I had to come back the next morning. So today is the next morning from when I did my video because some new information came out and I'm just gonna do y'all a nice good old screen record because I wanna go ahead and get this video done. Um, I had already finished my video and I was almost done uploading it when this information came out and I had to cancel everything. So what happened is news broke that Megan actually um, began a lawsuit against 1501 and Carl Crawford and um sorry i'm not gonna edit this audio y'all so it won't be that professional excuse me but it's like eight in the morning and i gotta get this out but so she's going to be suing carl in 1501 so um what it says here is that megan the stallion says certain execs at her record label have a rep for bullying and strong-armed tactics but she's taking a stand and taking them to court and she's already won a major battle Megan went on the offensive by filing suit Monday against 1501 Certified Entertainment. So she must have filed this already before she did that live. Because I think she did, oh, she did that live stream on Sunday. So she must have, she must have had the Rock Nation lawyers go up to the court Monday morning and file this because she wasn't playing. But anyway, so it says, um, yeah, she filed suit Monday against 1501 Certified Entertainment and it's Honcho Carl Crawford. As you know, she's mad about the contract she signed with the label back when she was 20 and claims it's now blocking her from releasing new music because she wants to renegotiate. A district judge in Harris County, Texas, granted Megan a temporary restraining order, which prevents her label from blocking the music she plans to drop on Friday. So that means that, um... She hasn't won, uh, uh, they haven't went to court or not anything at all. She hasn't really won anything but this temporary restraining order. So she will be able to drop music this Friday, whether it's the actual album or it's just a few. She's going to be able to drop something this Friday. So in the suit, Megan lays out the most outrageous terms of her contract, at least in her eyes. For instance, she claims the deal calls for 1501 certified to get 60% of her recording income. The remaining 40% goes to her, but then she has to use that to pay engineers, mixers, and featured artists who work on a song. Point is, MTS claims there's a small slice of pie left for her when it's all said and done. She also says her live gigs currently benefit the label more than her. Alright, so it says, according to the suit, the contract calls for all money for Megan's touring and live performances to be paid directly to 1501 Certified. She says the label is supposed to give her a proper accounting of what she's owed, but claims that but claims what they provided is incomplete and purposefully and deceptively vague. Megan also claims Crawford has been using his relationship with Rap A Lot Records founder Jay Prince to intimidate people in the industry. In the suit, she claims Crawford pressured a producer to hand over beats by saying that Prince would be mad. Megan claims Prince is notorious in the industry for strong-armed intimidation tactics and the comment was taken as a physical threat of harm. So this is a picture of Megan's mugshot from 2015. Then um, Megan thinks Prince had a hand in an online smear campaign against her, including the recent story about her getting arrested five years ago. So when I did the first portion of this video I said that I had found out well, unintentionally that her story about her mugshot was trying to get shopped around to taint her image and that was before this article came out so I was right y'all now um let's see all of these headaches simply aren't worth it to Megan who says in exchange for signing the contract she got a measly $10,000 advance, hence her desire to renegotiate. She's suing Carl and 1501 Certified Entertainment 
for at least $1 million in damages. Megan is not suing Jay Prince. By the way, the temporary restraining order she got also prevents the label from attacking her or abusing her on social media. Megan's attorney, Richard Bush, tells TMZ, We are very happy the court granted our TRO, which is a temporary restraining order, and thrilled that she... Oh, excuse me. And thrilled that the world should be able to now hear Megan's new music on March 6th, 2020. We will now proceed with the other claims set forth in a lawsuit. We've reached out to Crawford and Jay Prince's camps. No worry back. So. So, 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 so. <sighs> this is about to get really, really messy. And what I was saying is that this looks like it's going in the direction of getting really ugly because I said business isn't cute. And like I said, it's getting really, really ugly because... So, yes, this is getting really, really ugly like I said it would. Um, I just want to point out that just because Megan is suing them, that doesn't mean she will win. Hopefully she does, but this has happened time and time again. And most of these artists who go against their label in court don't win. Um, take Keisha, not Keisha, y'all, Kesha, for example, um, I think Drake went and tried to sue, plenty of others have tried to sue, but if there's a legitimate contract, then even if it's not a morally right contract, even if it's a 360 deal, um, if it's legitimate and valid, then the courts might still rule in the label's favor. So Megan has won like a small battle, but we don't know if she's going to win this war. But I most definitely will be keeping up because y'all know I love me some Meg. So I'm going to be keeping up on this story. I'm probably going to make a playlist so you guys can keep up yourselves. Um, so as far as the comments I made in the first half of this video, with the information that I was given that that's how I felt um and I kind of still feel like that in a way however now if this is all true which has got to be if the lawyers put it in the lawsuit if they only gave her a ten thousand dollar advance now let me make it clear a label can put a lot of money behind an artist but only give them so much so I still do think that Carl put a lot behind her but he was wrong in only giving her a $10,000 advance. I'm not sure how much I'm not sure how much smaller artists get when they first sign like that because you have to think Megan wasn't really I mean she Megan was working like she was working but as far as like popping, you know, we really didn't know who Megan was when she signed with him. So maybe that has something to do with him giving her the 10,000 but I still don't feel like that's right. Um, however, she did not read her contract and she signed, so that's where it gets kind of tricky. But hopefully Megan doesn't turn into like a Tanashi or a JoJo because if y'all remember, Tanashi and JoJo both had an issue with their label, couldn't release any music, and it took them like six or seven years before they could do anything with their own music, with their own image. And Tanashi also ended up going the same route as Megan where she ended up signing to Rock Nation. However, I think she signed after she won her lawsuit or she won her rights to her music from her label. So thankfully, Megan has already signed to Rock Nation and she already has their resources, obviously. And she doesn't have to wait that seven year period like some of these other artists. And then not even seven years, you have Designer, you have Lil Uzi, you have a lot of other rappers who who are still fighting, trying to get their music and their albums out. So I don't know. We'll just see um, what happens. But the way that this lawsuit was put out, like I said earlier, I said I'm kind of in the middle on this. But the way that Megan's lawyers put it, for my own opinion, I'm, it looks like I'm going to be gravitating towards Megan's side because that's just not right. However, I don't know the business of music, but I do know what will be morally right. And that just wasn't morally right. But then again, in business and in music, they don't care about what's morally right. Like Megan said in her live, they care about money first all the time, always. So there's the update for you guys. Um, don't forget, I post on every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday now and whenever else I want to. And I will be keeping up on this, like I said. I'm going to end this update here and then I'm going to finish the video how I originally had it. Y'all let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. Let's go ahead and have a discussion. Like the video because it's good for your edges. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a video. And that's it for today. I'm going to see you guys in the next one.